Welcome to Decide to Transform. You made it to level two. Deeper questions leading to deeper answers. I'm Tomas Garza, and I'm here to help you decide to transform. I'll be setting the pace for the process to support your unfolding. Learn and commit to a practice that brings simplicity and awareness of what is ready to be released. Join me now and allow the experience of a deeper sense of love. Welcome, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Wherever you are, I know some of you are joining live from Europe. So good evening to all of you. And if you're here in North America, either good morning or good afternoon. All right, we're going to jump right into it today because I've got a very special guest teacher. My good friend, Lisa Berry, joins us from Ontario joins us from Canada, and Lisa was on the show three weeks ago. She is back for more, and we're going to have fun. We've got a lot in store for you today. So Lisa, welcome back. Well, I'm so happy to come back. There's been a lot that's happened in the last three weeks since last show. Holy doodles. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, and uh, really, that, that is an understatement. And we have a great topic on hand today. Three weeks ago, guys, if you didn't catch that show, January the 7th here on Decide to Transform, go back and listen to that because Lisa shared with us some of her techniques and tips for transforming mind chatter. And we talked about a couple of different ways. Lisa, you talked about a couple of things that have really worked for you. So rather than rehash those here, it's the January 7th show of Decide to Transform. Go back, guys, and listen to that again if you have not. And we're talking today, self-talk transformation, again, is the theme, unconscious success. And Lisa, we talked about mind chatter a few weeks ago, and uh, is there a functional difference in your mind between mind chatter and self-talk? Absolutely, yes, okay. So I loved actually on your live today that you kind of mimicked what mind chatter is. You had your little hands up at your head, like, do, 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 like calculating <laughs> right. away there. And, and that is chatter. That is almost like, chatter doesn't really have the same use like there's the value is really low on that scale when we hear mind chatter now it serves a purpose because it's rolling around in there and you're trying it's like a pinball machine it's gonna land somewhere hopefully good but but self-talk is uh, you're deciding you're making decision to consciously choose where you're directing those thoughts so it's not just bouncing around so self-talk is actually like you know self-guided conversation self-guided thoughts and um, I'd love to start just by sharing. I think I think everybody will be shocked, but I would love to start with a, a, a quick little story. Oh, is that okay, Tomas? Cool. Can I do that? Yes, I'll, oh. yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Okay. okay, okay. So this is really truly. You guys can. I can. I can even tell my energy level right now. I know that you guys can. But here's here's a shocker. I've been through two transformations literally in my own like my whole entire life transformed based on two different key periods of my life where i decided to change how i was thinking and talking to myself because there's a all pretty much all through high school i was such a sad depressed like just almost like mourning life so badly that i prayed for it to rain and be dark and cloudy every day so that nobody would notice how how upset i was and every time the sun came out i was so like no because then you know everybody's going to be happy again and i'm going to still be grumpy oh. Uh -oh. it, it, I know it. And people say like, well, is that even, I remember I used to walk with my head down. I used to, I used to mm -hmm. like put off that, like, don't talk to me. Um, I'm grumpy kind of thing. And I was just, I just really had bad, I had bad mind chatter. I had really negative mind chatter going on. So uh, th that was, I had to, I, I'll, I want to share people that, that I want to show people that it is absolutely possible to have that kind of transformation because I'm clearly not like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And, and so I, people can all have, a, a, we are all obsessed, I think. I think we're so curious about makeovers, you know, before and afters. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And, you know, we, yeah, it's like they're fun. You think, wow, is that transformation truly possible? And I want to share with people that, yes, your mind, your thoughts can go through that very same transformation. As a child, I was very happy. And then I don't know what happened. I think puberty had hormones came in. I was like, who, who am I? <laughs> so, um, oh, yeah. but transformations do happen for reasons. Um, and, and so I, that's why I love that we're talking about, especially the difference between mind chatter and self-talk, because maybe if you, somebody's listening and is not happy with the way they're living and they don't like the way their life looks, it, it is time for a transformation. And we all can do that through self-talk. Yes, we most certainly can. And that's what makes this such a rich subject in, in my mind and why we're back for a second week of this. And I'm looking yeah. at the questions that people have asked me and that you've been asked, no doubt, in all of, of your career in different different capacities. This is a really rich topic that could go on for many, many different shows, uh, without a doubt. Now, you mentioned a moment ago that high school was one of the times where you really were able to transform your, your self-talk, and you mentioned a second. What was the other time in your life? Oh, sorry. I should have bookended that. So it was my, it was going, entering into high school that the one transformation happened because I was a very happy, positive, intelligent, social child, you know, through the whole thing. And then something switched and that was the first transformation. It went downhill, but that's possible. Uh, yes. You know, that that's, okay. mm -hmm. we can, some people get into, you know, like yourself, a, a motor vehicle accident of sort and the, the brain can change. And mine, I, I can actually share with people right now. I know that um, the foods I was eating and not eating played a huge role in my brain health and my mind chatter and my moods and all that. So um, it was by, I, I did eventually become a holistic nutritionist and that was key in helping me have better, healthier thoughts was to feed my brain, to feed my body properly too right. and balance anything going on. <laughs> but then the other transformation, yeah, was to, yeah, so transformation one, turning into the negative and then transformation number uh, two yes. coming back out of it. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Now, and it's interesting that you should mention foods playing a large role. And I love the, the phrase, feed your brain. Now, feed your brain. Were there particular foods in um, that you'd like to mention that have had a really good impact for you? Because I know there are listeners out there that are concerned about diet. You may be a nutritionist yourself if you're listening. So what, uh, what really worked for you? You know what? I think also too back then we all were so shamed against eating fat, you know, and so we were like, yes. get the fat out, you know, fat free diets. They were huge back then. And uh, and yeah. we just didn't really understand them. And, and we still don't. So like not we, but the majority of people just aren't educated for this. So I'd love to share that our brains are 60, 70 percent fat just by nature. And so we really need healthy I'm stressing this. We really need healthy fats in in our bodies. We need to consume this and, and get it right to that brain. So if we are low in healthy fat and and high in bad fat, that's a double no-no. That's a double no-no for the brain. You are not going to have the best of thoughts. You may not even know what thoughts you're thinking. But uh, of course, if you do eat fish, fish, fish fat is the uh, healthiest fat you can get into your brain. Not healthiest, but healthy fat for your brain. But we love olive oil. We love avocados. We love, um, you know, vegan um, options for DHA. That's the one you want. So I just want to stress that if you are thinking, wow, I don't really have a lot of fat in my in my diet, um, and the fat that I do have is trans fats, it's potato chips or deep fried or this or that, um, <laughs> then you're gonna really be, yeah, it's gonna be a struggle to keep a, a balance with your, with your brain. It's just not gonna have the basic tools um, to get going, to get going on these thoughts. And hydration, uh -huh. yeah, wanna hydrate that brain. Water, water, water. Uh, yes. <laughs> Yes, most definitely, most definitely. Well, I wanted to spend a couple of minutes talking about that because I know this is an area of concern for people and it's one that a lot of folks don't often think about, especially the hydration, mm -hmm. and um, that, that yes. really can have an impact. So I'm curious because you mentioned high school where your first transition was downhill and then you were able to transform your self-talk in an upward trend. Uh, you mentioned food and hydration, but are there other things that you did or is there something in particular that you'd like to call to people's attention that helped you during that time? Yes, actually, this is a big one. Um, I went from, I was in a, 
something we call here French immersion. So I had my own, my own little close knit family of, of my class because we, we never changed classes. We always had the same 12, 13 people. So from kindergarten all the way through to high school. And I, they were my support system. We all loved each other. We were kind to each other. We had, we had very encouraging. Um, yeah, we were all really encouraging towards each other. And, you know, we'd have our own little things you're growing up, but in high school, we all split up and my social circle changed. It was, it was, I think it was a shocker. Like they, they weren't encouraging and they were in, in high school too. You ever, I think the, you get a little bit more judgmental, a little bit more ego, a little bit more, everything is new and different. And I wasn't ready for the judgments and I wasn't ready to, I wasn't prepared to go, Oh, wait a second. I've got to use my filter. I know we, I talked about filter yesterday, but I didn't, I hadn't had to have used my filter before everything was perfect in my life. And suddenly it was placed in with, with tough stuff in the world. And I look at this this way, um, like the news, you know, it, maybe it's not high school for some people. Maybe it's that our social circle has been so opened without a filter that so many things can sneak in. I, I'm very careful when I open up my social media pages because I, I really truly don't want to see, I don't even want to, I don't want to see a word. I don't want to see an image and I will eventually. And I, I know that. So I want to build myself up, but we do need to have that filter and that support system in place. So the self-talk has got to be on point. You really got to choose what you're saying because that, and that's exactly what I had to start doing. I, I had to realize like, wow, what just happened to my life? Why am I feeling so alone and so um, judged or, you know, not made fun of? I don't want to say that, but you know what I'm saying? When you're walking down the halls and so suddenly people are looking at you differently than they were before, before they were running up to you like, oh, hey, Lisa, do you want to do this? And now, now it's like, look at her. What is she wearing? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and yeah, the self-talk does have to be on point. And this is so important in, in so many ways. And as far as the topic for today, as far as unconscious success, or if people want to conceive of it as subconscious, what in, in your mind does unconscious success involve? And how did you select this particular topic for self-talk? It's getting into the subconscious. Mm -hmm. And this is probably where, yeah, I think we'll, we'll sit on this lovely area for, for the rest of the show. So for everybody, this Everyone is the, this is that. the, the <laughs> nitty gritty part here. Well, right you know what it is, is that let's define success just for a moment here in, in this, in these terms. Okay. Success, what I'm talking about in, in this context is I love myself success. This is, I believe in myself success. This is, I have enough value and I think I'm an awesome person that if I met another being that I'm providing goodness in their lives as well. Like the success is going on like a worth and a, and, um, a self, a self growing kind of, and I have more to learn and I can learn more and I can understand it. And if I do, don't understand, then I, I have that ability to reach out and find people who will teach me or show me or mentor me like a lot of belief, like this kind of success is the, well, pretty much I can do anything. <laughs> the, the, I can do right. anything belief. <laughs> yes, most definitely. Most definitely. And I'm glad that you defined success the way you did, because that does mean different things for different people, but it's really, as far as any kind of transformation, it's really important for us to get into the subconscious, whatever it is, if it's exercise, if it's meditation, if it's your own positive self-talk. And uh, the people often feel really, really full, don't they? And, and overwhelmed. And in your experience, is it possible to have so much going on self-talk or mind chatter wise that there's not room for anything else or anyone? Yeah. See the, okay. So this is fun. This, that question, that's a great question because it will help me into the second one of let's talk about what, um, unconscious or subconscious can also mean in this context. And I, th I feel like this, this definition particularly is what I use all the time for any, any subject, but to me, unconscious isn't really, it just means I'm not focusing on it. It's, it's not that it's even operating because there's no focus on it. I'm not, I'm not using it. So it's, you know, whether people say, ah, you know, you have a subconscious or unconscious thought running. Well, it's not affecting me actually then it's when I put my attention on it. And so the, 
the, when, in this kind of way, the unconscious, what I want people to do is say, what am I not recognizing? What am I not focusing on that I, that I need to focus on, that I would like to focus on? Because if something is, is running, because let me tell you, it's, it's right there. It's right bold in front of you. If you've got an I can't going on, it's right there in your face. That's what you're living off of. So what we do want to do is shift that focus. And if we just get so much of that mind chatter going on and we're putting our focus on all the chit chat, all the chatter, if we put our focus on all the other, chatter, no, you're right. We can't, we cannot let something else in. Like we just, we've forget a filter. We've blocked it. Now we're like, no, I have so many, I can't and why bothers and I'm not good enough and all these things that we, there's no room for I can to sneak in the cracks. Right. Yes. And, and I think people can really relate to a situation where they just had so much going on that it was yeah. just impossible, right, to think about yes. anything else or anyone else for that matter. And people say so many different things, right, as with the self-talk. And you know, you'd mentioned when we were talking prior to the show about certain, I would call them maybe limiting stories, but things that, that people say, um, such as I'm tired or, or I don't have any energy. And in your experience um, in coaching and as a nutritionist, what, what's the thing that you heard the most as far as people's self-talk that was negative? Ooh, okay, that is a bigger answer. Did we want to wait till after commercial for that one? <laughs> well, I, think maybe, I think we can do that. Let's come back to that after the commercial break then. You're listening to okay. Decide to Transform on Ohm Times Radio with guest teacher Lisa Berry. Stick around. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi, I'm Tomas Garza, author of Decide and host of Decide to Transform on Ohm Times Radio. I want to ask you, if you want something in life, have you decided on it? If not, you'll listen to a limiting story about yourself. You will say you can't, you're too old, too young, etc. Decide to transform in life. Learn what you can choose to believe instead of your limiting stories. Decide. Available now in paperback and ebook. Did you know that you have the power to change anything in your life? Did you know you can do so even with the things that you've already decided are impossible to change? Come join me, Venus Castleberg, on Outside the Impossible as I interview people from around the globe that have literally changed the things they thought were impossible to change just by using the amazing tools of Access Consciousness. Now airing Wednesdays, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Do you dare to believe that anything really is possible? has taken everything and everyone I've ever loved away from me. Everything. I blew my ankle out and I got prescribed pain pills by my doctor. If making my detox public is going to help somebody, I'm all for it. So I just wish I would have had a warning. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth. Spread the truth. A message from Truth, the Ad Council, and ONDCP. Welcome back. You're listening to Decide to Transform here on Ohm Times Radio. I'm Tomas Garza, 
And we are joined live today by my very good friend and guest teacher, Lisa Berry. Lisa, before the break, we were talking about things that people say that would constitute negative self-talk, such as I'm tired or I can't or things like that, things of that nature. We call them limiting stories, whatever we want to call them. But in your professional experience as a nutritionist, as a coach, and as a podcaster, as well as a trainer, what's the number one thing? If you had to highlight just one self-talk challenge that you've seen people have. All right. Okay. And this will go back so far, but the, the bold statement is that so draining and probably the worst belief, like the most detrimental belief that we could hold is it starts off with, and we'll fill in all the blanks, but there's not enough. Oh, and with, with that statement, there's not enough is there's not enough time. There's not enough energy. There's not enough to go around. There's not enough money. There's not enough jobs. There's not this. And interestingly enough, when I started in uh, the weight loss industry, that was, you know, where I, I first learned that I wanted to absolutely be a nutritionist was although I worked with, with women at the time, women would come in and the number one thing they would say, even before I, you know, I want to lose weight. They said, I just, I just need some more energy. I'm drained. I'm tired. And what the thing was is they didn't know why they were drained or tired. You know, yes, carrying around an extra 20, 50, 100 pounds is certainly going to do it and not having those proper foods that we talked about, you know, healthy fats and hydration. But what it is was be, all of it had rolled into this mountain of negative self-talk that I can't, I don't have the energy to do it. Like, and, they, and they're reinforcing it. So I don't have the energy because they're tired. I don't, and now they're not getting the proper sleep or I'm, I don't get enough sleep or I can't sleep when I go to sleep. I have too much stress. No, like, no. like, yeah, there's like a lot of, the more we say it. And of course, you know how many people, you know, the next day you hear from somebody and they just said, or they'll just continuously say that, like, oh, I'm just so tired. I just, and, and it can be tired. Like, um, I'm tired of it. Like, I'm just tired of what's going on in the world, or I'm just tired yes. of hearing so-and-so talk about blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. And, and by saying that, do you know that like, even when we, those words come out of our mouth, we, our energy drops, it just plummets. Like, I just actually right. felt really, I actually slumped over and leaned on the arm of my chair when I was saying that. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. it has a, like an, an instant effect on your body. And in fact, I talk about posture a lot because in fact, I'm writing a chapter. It's being edited right now. It's all about barefoot balance. I was sharing with that with you the other day. Yeah, and by, right. yeah. And just by sitting up, putting your shoulders and carrying a posture, like when you're tired, if you keep saying, I'm tired, I'm tired. I've got this. Okay. Yeah, you could be, I'm not saying you're not, but what we're saying is let's do something about this. Let's direct the self-talk and start with our posture, hold the posture of what you desire. Do you, would you like to have energy or do you want to stay tired? So if you want to have energy, okay, what would you do if you were energized? You would, you know, be right. nice and tall and straight and ready to, you know, take on whatever's coming. And so start with that way first, start with carrying that posture, having that breath. And if you're really like, like, I'm just tired, you know, you're breathing differently. Like even start fake hyperventilate, just go <sighs> and get it going. <laughs> mm, uh -huh. yeah. And so really embody that because the, the not enough is going to truly give you that the not enough. And that's the number one. I mean, there's so many, but that was one I wanted right. to start with was to sure. say, yeah, not enough. Okay. And there's so many, I mean, there really are any number of different things that, that people could say. Now let's focus on how people get through that a little bit. You'd mentioned a couple of things such as someone's posture and how often in your experience, would someone need to catch themselves and repeat whatever exercise it was in order to start making unconscious and subconscious change? 
Yes. Oh my gosh. I love it. You said, and it is catch yourself almost. My, my mother used to do that to all, us all the time. She'd be like, sit up straight, sit up straight. Just constantly uh, yes. correcting the slouch. <laughs> thank, sure. thank goodness. But, um, but really what is this? Cause we can slide into literally say I'm just bubbling around the house and happy and playing with my cats and everything. And then, you know, pick up my phone and then I see something negative or something harmful or hurtful or, or tough or challenging or sad i it's a second it's a second that could literally be taken down so it is a constant mm -hmm. um correction but i do have an exercise that i i actually started with um back in the weight loss days again because it, here's a great posture one a lot of people you know if i were to ask them to do 50 sit-ups right now they'd be like mm, that's not gonna happen so we have to start somewhere. So what I suggest for posturing as well, sometimes say we do, some people, you know, still get on their phones or watch TV or whatever. And I used to, well, back in the day, we used to have commercial breaks. <laughs> we don't really have those with Netflix yeah. anymore. No. But you know, every, I think what it was, what every, what, seven to seven minutes or so, they'd put on a two minute commercial. Well, that's when I would tell them to, that's when you want to, oh, you know what? We do get those um, ads that come up on our videos and stuff. I would use that as a trigger, as a cue to say, Oh, wait, there's an ad on the video I'm watching or there's a commercial on. Let me check my posture oh, my real God. quick. And what I used to have the way people do is slide from the couch and go on the floor and put their backs against the couch and to have an upright posture because they might not be able to hold themselves up nice and tall right away, right? You got to strengthen it. And that's what I want is like get a trigger that happens regularly um, just to kind of check in and go, yep, okay, what am I thinking? How am I standing? How am I breathing? Where and where is it compared to where I want to be? What's the gap? Okay. Yeah, I love that. So practical things like a, oh, something outside of you, like a commercial break, for example, mm -hmm. something that's happening or appears to be going on in the world outside. I love that. That's a great tip for people because it's something that anybody quite literally can do. And yes. what strikes me, um, in having done some similar work, not as a nutritionist, but in, in my career as a mediator and also as a trainer, is that people have so many things that have gone on in the past, right, that lead them to a sense of being tired or drained or mm -hmm. a sense of scarcity, like there's not enough money or time or love to go around. And this actually leads us to a really excellent listener question that I'd like to have you take a stab at, if you don't mind mm. here. Sure, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. This question is one that I think a lot of people listening today can relate to. It, it's very, very, very common um, because we all have things that didn't go well for us in the past. And this question is from Connie from Oregon. So Connie, thank you so much for submitting this question for us. We're going to have Lisa give her take on this here. And the question is, I have a number of things in my life, let's call them challenges, that I wasn't good at. I'm referring to things like technology, like math, and for some of you, actually, it could be something else entirely that you're just not good at. And there are just some things that I wasn't especially good at in my past. And nowadays, when I'm faced with challenges, my mind reverts to negative self-talk a negative mind chatter and says things like, I'm not good enough. Okay, why waste your time? What's the point? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the current challenge is. This is what my mind replays. And what are your, your tips for Connie or for anyone worldwide out here? Because this is literally worldwide that's reverting to past situations what's your okay, thought on i love that? that and thank you connie for writing that in because that's exactly you're right yes. and i'm going to call that being haunted you know like you're haunted uh -huh. by this like oh not that again oh here it comes okay. <laughs> you know that's it. here's that technology task that i have to do or that math that i'm just not going to understand um, and we're already we're already making ourselves fail right from the get-go 
However, um, there's a there's a neat thing about that one with technology and math, and it's super easy to share on this one because my sister and I are completely opposite. I love math. Okay. I have a great relationship with, and my sister, absolutely no, not her strength. And so growing up, it was very interesting. Like, do we force her into? you know, constantly doing something that just her brain isn't wired that way and then to change her? Or do we just let her avoid it and never have to face that? So I can really appreciate that question. So thank you, Connie. Yes. Okay. So here's how I w I'm going to suggest we look at this. The, I, I, li I like that she added, why waste your time? Why, why am I wasting my time at this, right? Because you're already looking at like, I love this. This is perfect. She already values herself. My time is more valuable. This is going to stress me out. Um, I'm probably not going to get to the, the end result that I do need. So I, I want to highlight that. Congratulations, first of all. You had actually a positive thinking in there whenever you say, why waste my time? Now, I would love for you to stop next time you are faced with a, um, you know, a challenge like to do that. And if that question comes up, why, wait, why am I wasting my time on this? To say, okay, yay me, I'm valuing myself, so should I waste my time? Should I can invest my time on this? Might I get through this? Do I need help? Could somebody walk me through this where I didn't feel so alone and that I could learn? Or do I really not want to do this? Maybe this is to be handed off to somebody else. Is this, you know, because I think that's a great, she actually, there's an answer right in there for a thing. Why, why am I going to invest my time on this? And is it an investment or is it truly wasting my time? Because I am awesome at so many other things. I could put my time and efforts into that. And I, and recognizing that there is help, but I, and so we, we just want to, we want to soften that immediate freeze up, like, Ugh, not that again. Right. Okay. Because yes. we don't want to lie to ourselves and say, I can do this, or I'm going to sit here and put all my time into it, or I, I'm going to do it this time, you know, because you may not, and I don't want you to fail constantly. I don't want, you need a lot of, um, you want to build up success around these challenges. And so the self-talk becomes, hmm, okay, this is an area I find challenging, and I, I want to have a good relationship with the fact that I'm challenged around this and then highlight all the small good areas if you can find them that are around it. So you know what? Why are you doing the technology in the first place? It's probably because you're, you're building business or trying to do something on the computer. So I would look at it like I am really good at this thing that I need the computer for or to do math for. So I, I respect and, and love that this other thing needs to be done around it. But yeah, who can I ha have either do it for me or help me? And as you build those positive successes around it, really talk yourself through it. Okay. Yeah. And as far as building success around these challenges, you mentioned uh, softening the immediate freeze up. And are there other yeah. techniques other than the ones that, uh, that you just took us through that you've seen work for people really well just to kind of get past that initial hurdle, that awful feeling? Yeah, it's <laughs> the funny thing is, is that when I say immediate freeze, it's because we haven't done the work beforehand. Self-talk is okay. not something that we, we generally do in that minute. Uh, it, what it would be so helpful for many people to do is actually go, you know what, what is, what is the thing that really does stop me or turn me into that negative thing? What, what is like, we all know, we don't need to be in it that it happens. We can think back, like even keep a diary of for a whole week, that's all you need. Oh my gosh, you probably only need three days. Write down, this is nothing to do, right? It's just, you're just, you're just being aware. You're taking note, you're observing. You say, oh my gosh, I, I really had a fit. Like, oh my gosh, why is this happening to me? Or no, I don't like that. Keep a, a record of that. Like just journal it out and then pick the top three that really affect your day-to-day -day life that you think, wow, I really, you know, the, the, one of the top questions that people say, and I'm throwing a question in on your question. It's like, what else sure. could happen? You know, like how else could this day get worse? Those kind of things like, you know, like, right. like the, the technology or the math, like, geez, why is this, why does this always have to show up in my, in my world? You know? So if you're noticing that, write the statement down first, that's your first homework, homework. <laughs> and then, mm -hmm. and then you want to do the self-talk before you get into that situation. Again, you want to do outside of the problem. Don't wait till you're in the problem and go, Oh, here's my chance. Here's self-talking <laughs> because once you get the habit and the practice 
of how to turn it around, and, and we would love to help people with that, but once they get in the habit of knowing how to do it, then when they actually are in it next time and it happens, uh, then they're able to do it, use it. And one of my best ways of doing this, which is fun, it's always best to to use somebody else as a guinea pig. So I always love to, in my, yeah, hey, that's not fun. Well, I never tell somebody else when I see them doing it, but when I when somebody <laughs> else does like something, I think, wow, that was a negative turnaround. I'll think, ooh, what could they have said? Like, it's not me, I'm not in that mm -hmm. frustrated moment, right? So I've got like, how would I turn that around? And so keep it so that when I do have that moments, because we all do very similar things, now I can use that practiced. So start, just start constantly practicing that turnaround. Yes. Okay. Well, I love that. So there's so much there that's really, really helpful. And I love the writing down your observations. Because that yes. is a, that's a, such a good practice just to be aware, isn't it? And to notice what's going on. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for sharing that. And Connie, thank you very much for submitting this question. I would love listeners to know that you are welcome to send questions and we love to answer them on the show here. And you can do that by emailing me, tomas at tomasgarza.com or definitely send a, a, a message on Facebook. If we're connected on Facebook, let us know if there's a pressing question and, and let Lisa know. Uh, we're both on Facebook all the time and you can just send these to us. So Lisa has mentioned so many valuable things here, including writing down and being aware of your negative self-talk. All right, mm -hmm. so we, yeah. And uh, what we wanna do here is we're gonna take a quick commercial break and when we come back we'll have more self-talk transformation with lisa berry you're listening to decide to transform on ohm times radio Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Hi, I'm Tomas Garza, host of Decide to Transform on Ohm Times Radio. Thank you for listening. You know, there's only so much we can cover on a one-hour show. If you'd like to hear further from me, I happily offer personalized teachings. Get your very own voice recording or book a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Ask a burning question and gain clarity on achieving massive transformation in your life. Details available on my website. TomasGarza.com. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. I am Fidel Nshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family, and then, boom! Everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they resettle to America and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back to Decide to Transform. I'm Tomas Garza, and you are listening to 
our special special guest teacher, Lisa Berry, who is sharing some really important and valuable tips for transforming our self-talk, taking it from a place of negativity to a place of service. In other words, that serves you and rather than brings you down, picks you up and allows you to make concrete changes and massive transformation over time in your life. And Lisa, you have an important comment on recognizing negative talk that you'd like to make. You've got the yes, floor here. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> right on. So here's the here thing. We go. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the thing about recognizing negative talk, people would think, well, it's obvious. I'd like to say that it's not. <laughs> and, and here's mm. why. Yeah. Um, we feel negative talk, but we don't always consciously and have this awareness about negative talk and I want to highlight some of them and, and tell a little story. Negative talk, you know, it's not just about, oh, you know, I'm telling myself I can't do something, I'm a failure, I'm ugly, I'm fat, I can't do this. Or it's not about even just saying those things about others openly like that. It is about non-cooperation. It's competition. Maybe, uh, okay, so I want to, I want to polish that. Hold on. What uh, we can tell when we don't feel good inside, we think we, ha we can have anxiety build up. We can have fear. We can have sadness. We can have anger. We can have judgment, which is probably the most sneakiest form of self uh, negative talk is judgment, judgment of others, judgment of the way the world works, okay. judgment of even, yeah. Um, well, you do it that way and I do it this way and honestly, mine's better. Well, it's not better. It's better for you, but there doesn't need to be it's better. It's just better for you. Um, it's very like, I think the word, I'm going to say the word wrong, but is it sidious? Is that the word I'm looking for? It can be yes, sneaky insidious. and small, but you know, exactly. yes, yes. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, it, and that's, and that is the negative self-talk I'd love people to be. When you go on a, a social media and you make a comment that doesn't make you and the other person, that's negative and that's going to be harmful. And, and I find this so, you know, and there's my story that goes along with this is that this is, oh my God, decades ago, I was, um, I called my mom up on the telephone and we were just having a little chat and, and my mother was a very negative talk. She's very po positive and loving, but she had a lot of judgment, a lot of pain, a lot of hurt inside of her. And sometimes, okay. you know, mm -hmm. you get, you get drawn in and you get caught in somebody else's web and you don't even mean to, but you do. And then you think, oh, well, they're saying that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I got that other person. They, I don't like the way they do that either. And then you get in a little gossipy and then you're all of a sudden passing judgments. And now you've built a team against this person in that group. And, yeah. you know, and maybe you're talking about something that's not even so close to you, but it's maybe politics, maybe whatever. But if you're not making the change, if you're not making a positive impact, you're not making a good influence, that's hurting you. And I remember after this one conversation it wasn't even that bad to be honest it was just very casual but it was it, it is see how i just said it wasn't even that bad it was it was so bad actually <laughs> that when i got off the phone i felt sick and i oh. called my mom right back and even though she started it i actually apologized to her <laughs> i said I think we're both hurt by that conversation because we talked about somebody else and not in a positive light. And I said, then I don't really want to do that ever again. And it was really cute because she goes, oh, she goes, I just love you. And it was like, we, uh, we both needed to have an apology to like, to say, you know what? I do love you. And I love that other person. And we just separated ourselves from them. And that's not cool. Okay. That's not nice. And so that was my comment. I really wanted to share with people that it, it's all those other tiny things where we separate ourselves and we're not cooperating with, with others and we're in pure competition and we're in judgment. And that's this negative self-talk that I would love for people to be really aware right. of what's affecting their, their mind and their health. Yes, both. Right. And it's yeah. not, like you said, always obvious. In fact, often it's not. So if you had one tip, like a top Thing that people could do to recognize this and to pull themselves out in the moment as much as they can, as best they can. Yeah. What's the best tip you would give somebody? Oh, okay, okay. This is fun. Okay. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I would suggest that everybody go into get, get out of your head, get into your heart, and say, "Wow, how could I feel good in this moment?" And I'm going to take it up a notch that negative thing comes in, you go, 
if I just, if I could give a gift in this moment to a person who is feeling like I feel right now, like what words could I say that would be the gift? Like um, a little bit of empathy, compassion, understanding, um, joy, tell a joke. I mean, tell yourself a joke. I tell myself jokes all the time. They're not always funny. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's still like smile. Like you said, you know what? Wow. I'm, I just said something really horrible to myself about, you know, negative. Just stand there and put a smile on your face, even if you you know, it's like weird because you're thinking I'm actually upset right now. Just smile. What gift could you give yourself in that moment that you could at least feel a little bit better? And that would be the number one tip. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. So what gift would you give to somebody who's feeling the way you're feeling right now in the moment and give that to yourself? And I also love guys repeating for, for the listener, how could I feel good in this Mm -hmm. moment? Because it really is so much about that. And uh, yeah, that is something that um, it's maybe something that you've tried. Um, If you're listening out there and you can relate to having a lot of this, a lot of these feelings of judgment and anxiety, we've all had them from time to time. So yeah. Oh, Thomas, actually, yourself. Yes. I would love to share this. You know, this is something that um, I I do a lot, actually, because it's it's out there. I go online, I look at something, and all of a sudden I, I... I get really stressed out because I've seen something mm. awful that I didn't want to see about animal treatment around the world, around the globe. And I'm like, oh my God, I, ca- I can't even fix this. I can't take it out of my brain. What do I do? You know what? I immediately go, how could I feel better right now? Because right now I'm feeling really not good. I And for mm. me, I quickly, swiftly, right in that moment, I scooch myself over to my own kitty cats, you know, somewhere that I get this squirrel doing something outside and I and I really focus into that and I make sure I go do I feel good this feels good and I talk about how good this feels and I say it out loud or I you know what I really mean that it's, you're really taking action and almost like it's triage we love that word <laughs> triage yes, but we do. <laughs> almost like this needs to, this needs to be corrected right now and and poured have love poured in it so yes I just I, I love to that. say that <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm glad you did. Yeah, thank you for saying that because it's so important, no matter what we do, that we give what we want to feel. Yes. If we want to feel a certain way, we give that away and not so that we're deprived of it, but actually it works quite the opposite, doesn't it? We actually increase that by the giving. That was so well said. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, thank you. I, I didn't make that up. It's uh, it's years of, of, of learning on, from a lot of different people, <laughs> actually. Yeah. But that's so true, is, is that if we want to feel good about something, if we want to feel love, for example, there's really no better way than to actually give that. Mm-hmm. And it, as, as Lisa, as you've said, it really helps you transform a really potentially negative downer situation and at least Mm -hmm. neutralize it and eventually turn that around. So yeah, I'm so glad that you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. So in this last part of the show here, I know you and I have been talking before the show, you've mentioned a couple of things that you would like to call our attention to. And one of them is a new venture that you've got just launched that you'd like to tell our listeners about. So let me give you the floor on that. Oh, well, thank you. Yes. And and this really is, you know, my thing is, is I have to ask myself, what makes me feel so good? And as we just talked about, how can I give this to others? And what has just transformed my life truly, 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 I'm so happy. Oh my gosh. Wow. Is I am a professional podcaster and yeah. it's so fun thinking that because I was like, wow, I was, I was a nutritionist before. Now I'm able to not only talk about um, health things and nutrition things on air, but I, I get to be at home with my kitty cats and you know make my living. And I thought, wow, I this is I feel fulfilled and I love interviewing people and I love sharing time with people. So I thought, uh, let me let me figure out how I can help others become successful too. And along the way, I met you, so <laughs> that was fun. And and then you became you stepped into your role as a teacher on the airwaves and podcaster. And and then as this kind of um, I was already creating this program. It's called Podcast Prosperity Mentorship okay. Program. Mm-hmm. And you and I have really. Um, been there for each other to learn like you know what is it about podcasting that can you know enrich people's lives and not just you as the podcaster but others because that was important to you you wanted to you want to help yes. others and 
how do you do that on such a, a global scale? And um, so this program, uh, Podcast Prosperity Mentorship Program, has been created to, at first on my end, to attract authors who would like to take their book and their next book they're going to write in the next book and turn it into a podcast and multi-layer it with different types of, you know, ways that we can connect with um, readers and now listeners. So you got, you know, got your two. And I, and I, I hope I'm, got, I'm going to go up bold here, but I'm happy to share that <laughs> you and I worked well, so well um, in, in getting, you know, working together and, and um, you know, I don't want to say creating, but creating your podcast, but yes, um, oh, that definitely. you're stepping in and you have become a partner in Podcast Prosperity. And so we together are inviting authors and people who already maybe even have a podcast who thought, wow, I really, I want to take this to the next level. I want to have a great show. I want to talk to people and connect. And I, I want to make a living at this. This is my my dream job. And so we're inviting people to ask us more about this, this mentorship program on how to get comfy and how to do it confidently and how to monetize it and do all these things. And it's just, it's so much fun. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's so much fun to be joining you in this venture. And I can attest to this as a podcaster it really is wonderful. And it, it's literally, we've got a worldwide audience here right yes. now. We have folks joining from Europe and Australia as well as North America. And wherever you're listening from, it is a way that people can most certainly broaden their reach. And if you have a message, this is a real good way, mm -hmm. whether you're an author or not, but it's great if you are. This is far beyond just a book sale. So Lisa, how would you, how would you have people get a hold of you to ask further questions about this? Well, first, easiest is always, I guess we say Facebook. And so, of course, yes, you can mm -hmm. reach out to me on Facebook, which is Lisa Berry, like a strawberry. That was fun being a nutritionist with that last name. Um, and um, but but also, too, I would love to, you know, what, get into my inbox. So it's Lisa at Light on Living dot com and that's l i g h t light on living dot com uh, and yeah because then you're right there and then you know if facebook ever decides to go elsewhere you can still talk to me <laughs> <laughs> All right. right yeah i would say the same for me facebook is is definitely the easiest and the best but there's also email as well so wonderful well thank you so much and i'm so happy to be joining you on this Aww. venture because uh, you're, you're absolutely correct we did work very well and creatively together and it's such a fun process so if you're out there and you're listening and thinking gosh i'd really like to maybe not just be a guest on someone's podcast now and then, but maybe have my own show, maybe I've got my own show, then definitely feel welcome to reach out to us. So I wanted to have you talk about that, but also while we have some time left today, I want to extend a special offer to those listeners who would like more help with self-talk transformation. So say some more about that, if you don't mind. Okay, exactly. And let's use the, the example of Connie here. Connie wrote in a question. We're able to give some general advice around it, but let's just say you have a situation you think, oh, I just, I really want to turn this around. I don't, I don't, I no longer want this statement, this belief that I have that doesn't serve me anymore, that no longer serves me. And I want to know what is the language? What are the words I, I could be saying that would help me specifically? And in this instance and in this thing and you've got some and we really want to help you go further we're inviting you so to both Tomas and I would love to help you do a complete turnaround of your negative self-talk and find the right words um, to say okay what do I say what do I do um, and what modality am I going to be using this and then that will be me. That will be our script. We'll be figuring out the script with you. And then Tomas is actually going to give you an exercise, whether it's meditation, a guided meditation, some way of anchoring in this new belief, this new way of talking. And we are inviting you to do this. Now, Tomas and I, this is our first offer that we've ever made for any healing together. And so we wanted to make an introductory right um, to say, we really want to help people. So let's do it really affordably at $79. But then we did it even better. We said, Let's just go crazy, and for the next week, if you would like this opportunity with us, um, then we're doing it literally for twenty nine dollars. I'm kind of excited about that, Tomas, and I really appreciate you yes. just wanting to help people. 
Oh, absolutely. Well, and likewise, this is great because, guys, Lisa is really, really wonderful. I can say this from personal experience at taking a challenge or taking a troublesome situation and helping people reframe that or rework that somehow. And that is something that she will offer with this. And I will also then come and offer a practice, an action, could be a meditation, could be something else, but as a way of anchoring the change so that you can be sure that it's not just an, an exercise that you repeat maybe every so often, but something that you can do to really have this take root in your life. And again, as Lisa said, $29 introductory offer. Now, how long is that good for? Okay, so I think what we've, we've decided that we would love to be able to offer it at the $79 rate um, up until the end of February, February 28th. However, if you guys want to get in right now, even if you're going to buy it as a gift for someone else, if you book between now and one week from now, so I think that's February 5th, we are honoring that $29. we are inviting you to take advantage of it for $29. That's amazing. I'm so excited love about it. this. Okay, yeah, and the question is, is there, what's one area in your self-talk that you know consistently, constantly gets you stuck or, during, or just kind of drags you down, and if you could shift one thing self-talk-wise, what would that be? All right, and yes. remind us again how to get hold of you for this. Right. So we're doing this together, and how's yes. the, what's the format for it? Well, be fun to do it on Facebook because you and I could chat back and forth. But otherwise, yes, Lisa at lightonliving.com or on Facebook, Lisa Berry, B-E-R-R-Y. And you guys got get ready for some transformation. It's going to happen. <laughs> It's going to be fun, and this is going to be about a 15 to 20-minute call, guys. We work fast. Okay? High speed. So, <laughs> High speed. High speed. All right. And you can get a hold of Lisa on Facebook. You can get a hold of me on Facebook. Email. I'm Tomas at TomasGarza.com. And, well, you've been listening to Decide to Transform on Ohm Times Radio. We'll Thanks so much, Tomas. Oh, bye, guys. You.